today we'll be doing something super exciting. I'll use a 3D scanner to capture a high detail model of a pastry, plant and an iconic character from Star Wars. We'll see how this scanner can help you add realism to your project and help you bring complex items to the digital world. Whether you are an architect, a 3D artist, game designer or just love 3D tech, this tutorial is for you. And stay tuned, because by the end of the video, I'll let you know how you can get these scan assets for free. We'll be using the Moose 3D Scanner from 3D Maker Pro, a flexible, high-performance scanner designed to capture detailed and accurate 3D models. Scanning assets will help you when it comes to adding realism to your projects. By capturing real-world objects, you can create 3D models that retain every texture, complex shape and subtle imperfections bringing unparalleled realism to your designs. For this project, I'll be using the R2D2 droid from Star Wars, and to get the best scan, it's essential to set up everything correctly. I've placed the R2D2 on a turntable for easy 360 degree scanning. Good lighting is key, so I'm using soft diffuse lights to reduce any harsh shadows. Now, let's connect our scanner to JM Studio and get started. Now, in JM Studio, I am setting the scan quality to normal, and I found this mode great for capturing little details. This scanner has color texture captured, and because we want to get those iconic blue and white colors, I am setting slam mode to texture. This will ensure our final model has all the color data we need. I'll leave the sensitivity at 5 and adjust the brightness while scanning so I don't get any red dots. All right. Let's begin the scan. You just need to connect the turntable to a USB port and it's going to slowly rotate object. In JM Studio, just press scan and with the table rotation, the scanner captures different angles. This part may take a bit of time, so patience is key. You want to scan from multiple angles to avoid any blind spots and capture all the details. For example, I captured two angles and because the figure is around 25 centimeters, I also scan some parts by hand. There are multiple tips on the screen guiding you for the best scan. You can see on the left side of the screen the perfect distance to a good scan. And also this little picture with the red dots in the areas with too much brightness. With the scanning complete, it's time to process the data in JM Studio. The first step is to align. This has an auto alignment tool, but I'll fine tune it to manually get a perfect fit. The point cloud alignment is very easy to use. Here you have three images on screen and you just need to select the marker points and put them in the same place on both images. You can add more points for a more precise result. Now comes the fun part. Time to process your scan. But first, a few tweaks. You can select and delete unwanted parts before and after the process to make sure everything is perfect. When you click on process, you have a few more options. I'll leave refinement as generic and high, but if you change to advanced, there are a few more options to choose from. Jam Studio has already captured the color data. The texture mapping can take a little bit more time to process, so don't worry if it looks a bit stuck. It's normal. And just like that, our R2D2 3D model looks fantastic. Once you're happy with the scan, it's time to export it. I'm saving the file as an OBJ with its texture maps so it can be used in other software like Lumion. But you can also save it in other file formats. And there you have it, a fully colored 3D model of R2D2 ready to beep onto your 3D projects. Now, I thought it would be fun to scan something delicious, a croissant. I'm not going to show you the full process, we already did that with the other model, so now I'll just resume the scan and show you the result. The unique texture and layers of a croissant make it an interesting subject to capture. Let's see how well the scanner handles this flaky challenge. Using the same high resolution settings and texture capture mode in JM Studio, I'll scan it from multiple angles to get a complete 3D model. And here's how the scan turned out. As you can see, the scanner captured the overall shape beautifully, and even the layers and flaky texture are fairly well defined. The color texture mapping did a great job of preserving the golden brown crust. However, there are some areas where the finer crumbs or the glossy spots weren't picked up perfectly. This is something I might try to refine with additional scans 
or by tweaking the point cloud alignment and texture settings in Gem Studio. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with how the Cressa turned out. It's not perfect, but it's a great starting point for experimenting with foot scans. And who knows, maybe we can turn this into a 3D printable croissant for a front project. I did some other tests with this spread and the results are also very impressive. As you can see in this scan, I ended up with a great model I can use for my future projects. Another object I thought would be nice to try is this cobblestone. Here again, the scanner did a great job capturing not only the shape, but also the textures and colors. The possibilities with this scanner are really infinite and I'm full of ideas of fun objects I want to try to scan next. For my next scan, I wanted to test the scanner with something a bit more challenging, a small plant. I set everything up correctly as I did with other objects, but as you can see, the results aren't perfect. Even after trying multiple scans from different angles, I wasn't able to capture the entire plant, especially the finer details of the pointy leaves. This isn't the first time I've had this issue, and it's something I've noticed even with other scanners as well. It could be due to the delicate thin structures that are harder for the scanner to detect, or perhaps I'm missing a crucial step. If you've encountered this problem or know a workaround, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your tips and experiences. In the meantime, I'll keep experimenting to see if I can improve the results with better lighting or a different scanning setup. Next, I decided to try to scan an Xbox controller. And honestly, I was surprised by how smooth the process was. Balancing the controller on the turntable was easier than I expected, and the scanner had no trouble capturing its ergonomic shape, buttons, and texture grips. With the controller balanced, I let the turntable do the work while the scanner captured it. The details came out great, especially around the thumbsticks and triggers, which I thought might be tricky. In James Studio, the Arbo Line feature really impressed me, it merged all the scans seamlessly, even with the controller's intricate curves and buttons. I didn't have to spend much time tweaking anything, which made the whole process much easier. The final result was a detailed and accurate 3D model of the Xbox controller, complete with all the textures and features. Scanning this was quite a smooth experience, comparing to other objects I worked with, and the auto alignment made a huge difference. I really enjoyed testing this 3D scanner that 3D Maker Pro kindly sent me to try it out and test it. And I think it has great value for its price as it's one of the most affordable options for good quality scanning. You can go to store3dmakerpro.com and see all their scanners. The Moose scanner was really easy to learn how to use, which makes it a plus for everybody who's starting in this area. This scanner has color texture capture, fast processing, it's plug and play and supports multiple output formats works seamlessly with Gem Studio, which offers advanced point cloud processing, noise reduction and texture mapping. So whether you are an architect, a 3D designer, just looking for something to scan real-world objects to get them into your projects, or a new model for your 3D printing project, the Moose Scanner from 3D Maker Pro might be just what you need to take your projects to the next level. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoy seeing how you, we brought R2D2 to life in the digital world. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can scan this asset for free by clicking in the link below. If you found this tutorial helpful, please hit that like, subscribe for more 3D content and drop a comment below if you want me to continue making more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.